Looks pretty good. I can hear Bobby really well. You can introduce me, bro. Cool, man. Something about yeah, no, can you hear yeah your connection is lagging a little bit, but uh, it will do. It's good enough. All right. So we're ready to go? We are. We are. We are. Yeah. I think we're live already. Eh? Live. 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 So you're the moderator now, Frank. Yeah? Uh, I'm the moderator. moderator. <laughs> okay, Frank. Ah, oh, there he is. You can just... Yeah, man. Uh, Guys, okay. what up? Sweet. Today, today we have some technical difficulties. Frank, but I hope Frank before it. you start, a little bit louder. A, a little bit louder. We, yeah. L louder. Yeah. Charles. Uh, talk louder. Charles, a little bit louder. I uh, me louder. Yeah. Charles, like talk a little bit louder. Like this? Is it good? Yep. Good. Okay. Guys, what up? You're live. Nah. Here. No, it's good. Yeah. Good. It's not. It's not really that loud. I can hear Frank perfectly fine. Your sound is like a 5 out of 10, so it's not really loud. Mm -hmm. Can you attach a headset or something? Headset. Or hold the phone closer. Okay. Charlie, why don't you just sit over here and do it like one headphone? Like? Take, take the move. Yeah. Like yeah, you could do that too. And like this, it's good? Better? Yeah, that's okay. Better? Kind of. Okay. okay. So, so we do a bit about this way. Okay. I will a little bit. I will disconnect them. Let's just disconnect it. Hmm. No, it's, it's, it's really good. Okay, it's good. Really good. It's, it's good. It's good. So, do you hear me? It's good? You hear me, Bobby, right? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right, man. It's not perfect, you know? Okay, it's good. <laughs> fuck, fuck, it's fuck. all right. So, guys, uh, Ni Hao no. from, uh, from Taiwan. We finally made it happen. It's not perfect, but we made it happen. I'm here live with uh, Bobby from Bobby's Perspective and our buddy, Frank Yang. And what we're going to talk about today is good. What? Okay, just my assistant had to grab my phone. Okay, good. So, what we're going to talk about today, I don't really know so far, but I guess we're going to talk about like perhaps psychedelics, even spirituality. I know veganism was a big topic for Bobby. Um, all kinds of stuff, Jed McKenna, let's see. And before I start, I want to introduce Frank to my audience. Frank, do you hear me? Yep. Good, good, good. I don't see you, by the way. You don't see me? Yeah. Oh, I see him. You see him? It's like okay, jumping cool. back and forth the way we're. Okay, so people see you. Okay, cool. So uh, just a little backstory. I like to uh, talk about how I found out about my guests. So if Frank, I guess I watched your video since like 2012 or 2011. And you started to make videos about like bodybuilding, the gym, like gaining muscle mass. But then funny enough, you went into like neurobiology and you ended up at like spirituality. And when I asked you, uh, to introduce your your topic from from your channel to like to like other people, you said it's about the transformation of consciousness. So can you talk a little bit about your your evolution of your content? Uh, I first started doing uh, just you know fitness, and then I always just wanted to uh, you know transcend and take things to the next level. And uh, so first you get the body, and then the body evolves into the brain, and once you get into the brain and the evolution of the brain turns into the mind and the mind turns into consciousness and then it goes all the way back because consciousness includes the, the body and the brain everything is arising in consciousness so That's how you met how did you <laughs> realization well, what, what happened <laughs> when was it uh, when like, how, how did you make this realization? Because I know people, they work out it since like 20 hmm. years, but they never make this connection. Uh, genetics, bro. <laughs> genetics. <laughs> genetics. <laughs> oh, oh, what, what it's not genetics. <laughs> what would you say? How, how did you uh, find out about Frank's, Frank's content? About Frank's content? Yeah, so first and foremost, before we start, I want this on the record, so to speak. Frank, big fan, and I found out about your channel just around about two years ago, I think. And that was when you did the video on Rich Piana and Eckhart Tolle going on a Tinder date. Oh, dude. And that thing totally uh, fucked my mind. I loved uh, it. It's uh, this very day, one of my favorite videos on YouTube, probably. Thank you. Yeah, and this is how I found out about your channel. Uh, absolutely amazing. I just rewatched it right now before starting the podcast again with the non-dual nothingness cock. Fantastic work. So this is how I found out about you. Yeah. Thank you, Dubai. Do, do you remember uh, what it was about, Frank, for the viewers or, or Bobby? Um, no, uh, what it was about? Yeah, yeah Frank. 
the uh, no, the, the video about Actoli and Rich Piana. Rich Piana. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think it was about like how the uh, how they're both kind of like the same because they're occupying like two sides of the extreme. Um, Rich Piana could be perceived as like pure ego, and um, Actoli could be perceived as pure consciousness. And when something is pure, it's non-dual. So like, Actoli is like a non-dual. Uh, consciousness guy and Rich Piana is kind of like a non-dual muscle head so they're kind of like in the opposite end of the spectrum and that kind of makes yeah. them the same and then I think if you if you in the one opposite side of the spectrum it's easy to like flip over to the other side mm. yeah so like right. um, that's why like Mike Tyson's like smoking DMT and stuff too you know mm. yeah. or Dorian Yates yeah, yeah, Dorian Race as well. Right, Dorian Yates as well. Dorian <laughs> Ross, uh, all kinds of yeah. It's true, it's true. Yeah, this is the same with dietary dogmas as well. If you think about it, this is why you see so many ex vegans switching to raw carnivore, even. And you yeah. see them yesterday, they were eating oatmeal, today, they're drinking blood. So yeah. it's really, yeah, it's true that you can switch from one thing to the other, especially if you are on that other extreme. I always like to say the pendulum yeah. has to swing back, yeah. so to speak into homeostasis and for that it has to go to the other extreme to balance itself out again yeah, otherwise you exactly. can't really understand it but on the other hand if you explore both extremes like that you get an understanding of the whole spectrum if you stay in the middle all the time the so-called golden path yeah that's the path of mediocrity as well so therefore you won't really understand the whole spectrum by right. going to those extremes you have a holistic understanding right i agree yeah, yeah. that's totally true i would say that too like if you have two sides of the extreme cover, you get the middle as well. Yeah. And about right, you, Bobby, right. I also want to talk a little bit about you because uh, I was talking about you with Frank this morning, like talking about your story a little bit. Like you were like raw vegan, you became like a normal vegan, and then you had like issues, you became a raw, like you right. went to raw carnivore. So what's the thing about, mm. about you right now? Are you like back in balance or what, what, what's new? Let me, let me yeah, go turn, turn on the AC real quick. Mm -hmm. You guys keep talking. Oh, I wish I had one too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Good on you. I wish I had one here too, man. I don't have an yeah. AC. I'm sweating my balls off. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, no worries. So what's new with you, Bobby? Yeah, so. First and foremost, we don't want to bore Frank too long with this vegan dietary dogma. Therefore, I'm going to cut myself short. And do Even though on that note, I have to say that. No, you're, you're, no, you're annoyed. Huh? <laughs> yeah. On that note, not... on that note, before quitting veganism, one of the videos that made a humongous shift in my life. I don't want to lick your balls here or kiss your ass, Frank, but I have to say that as well because I watched one of your later videos about veganism when you're in that sushi restaurant with the family, and you were describing how. Oh uh, yes. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember that one? Yeah, and that I played a that huge one. role. Oh. Yeah. It played a huge role because the thing is this, you know, I identified with a lot of things that you said, but on the same token, I found myself very restricted with that vegan label. Mm. And you cannot really truly navigate through this reality if you have any label. It is impossible, right? No matter what it is, even if it is a religious label, let's say you are Muslim and you cannot eat pork, you will be in a restrictive situation sooner or later. With right. veganism, it is, of course, even more extreme, right? You will find yourself constantly battling dietary dogma if you want it or if you don't want it right. if you see somebody else eating meat you will automatically think about a dead animal and that is inescapable your thoughts will wander to that straight away if mm. you're vegan it's impossible mm. and therefore that was so restrictive and all the spiritual practice even though i hate that term all the psychedelics all the meditation and whatnot all the traveling everything came to that point where it didn't mean anything any longer because I was so restricted that all those teachings couldn't be applied at all. Yeah. And therefore, I found myself every single day just struggling with this label, meanwhile, physically degenerating as well. And this is when I made the switch. And this is one of the moments when I saw that video of yours. And I almost fucking cried tears, man, because it was so beautifully put, the cycle of life, you know, in that video. That was really beautiful. I love your channel. And this is something that I want to mention as well. It's just mind-blowing to me that you don't have fucking one million followers, man, because your content is so unique and it is one, if not the favorite channel on YouTube for me personally. Thank Huge you. fan on that note again. And it just, uh, 
man, it makes me frustrated that people don't understand that work, it seems. Because for 10 years or how long have you been on YouTube? Uh, about 10 years, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, 160,000 followers is not little, but still, for 10 years, you see people in two years, they have 1 million followers with six-pack shortcuts or something. And I find it quite frustrating because I see quality content, which I would like many more people to see. Yeah, but I didn't answer your question, Charles, at all. I went on a rant. That's good. <laughs> no, man, that's good that you're here. That's good. Yeah. Good. Mm. Yeah, about the extremes, again, I don't feel that I am going to those extremes consciously in that sense. It is not like saying, you know what, I want to drink blood and eat raw animal flesh right now <laughs> because that is a conscious decision and I want to shove it to the vegans and tell them, go fuck yourselves, take your lentils, piss off, I'm going to drink blood, right? That's <laughs> not it. It is more an intuitive approach of a certain aspect in life that was missing. And therefore, I find myself after four years of eating only plants, eating predominantly animal flesh. So every time I'm trying out to balance it out again, especially with bodybuilding, we all know that carbohydrates have their place. I still find myself drawn back to animal foods because my body simply doesn't react well to those plant foods. Even if I wanted to ideologically or out of a biomechanical standpoint to implement more plants, I simply can't. When I do, I get all the symptoms again, diarrhea, bloating and whatnot. So therefore, I just stick with what works. And again, this is why veganism cannot keep you in the current now, if you will, because if it, not, if it isn't working, you cannot try something else. That's it, right? So if you have something that doesn't work right now with your diet, hey, you have no dogma to try tofu instead of fish, right? You could if you wanted to, and yeah. then you'll see if it is better or worse. But as a vegan, if you're eating, again, tofu or lentils or beans and it does not work, then you will have to stick to that approach. Maybe you can take a plant-based protein powder. Maybe you can take some nuts, some seeds, whatever. But you cannot try sushi. It's impossible because you are in the dietary dogma. And with that, you cannot be free. So therefore, again, to answer the question, I'm not choosing those extremes necessarily, but I'm just going with the flow. And I feel naturally, if you will, attracted to that type of eating right now. But that will change as well, probably, like everything. Yeah, yeah that, that's kind of like the same as uh, as when Charles asked me how my evolution came about. It's just it's just kind of unfolded naturally because I think um, we just want to go back to the source eventually, you know. And then if you just follow like follow the flow of the flow of things, you're gonna end up at the source. You're gonna go back to itself. The source is gonna go back to itself. Mm. So it's not like my conscious decision to like evolve from a bodybuilder to uh to like an artist whatever or to like focus on the body and then like the brain and the mind and consciousness but at the same time from the bigger, bigger picture it's always that you're not really there's no expansion of consciousness it's because consciousness is always just there and uh every every point every every uh corner in the field of awareness is equally awake so like you don't really expand consciousness it's more like you're 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 um, taking away kind of like Michelangelo's uh, analogy of how he makes a sculpture. You know, he said that when he chips away a marble, uh, he's just freeing like the uh, the spirit that's already inside. So he's just chipping away like the components in a marble that's not necessary in a sense. And the process of doing that, it's 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 kind of like it's automatic almost not really a con conscious decision because like as, a, as an artist when you go into a flow state you know you just kind of there's no doer there you know you just kind of just follow like your intuition and when when you're already connected to source during that flow state it's, it's inevitable that it's going to go back to itself so it's it's kind of like the same process you know and then of course reality is always changing you know every 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 moment it's like Rising and passing away, and um, every 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 uh, the reality is like blinking in and out of existence and uh, vibrating and uh, just punctuating and uh, blinking. Like every 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 nanosecond is like a point of like birth and, and death. You know, birth and death. Yeah, we said it today. Yeah. So, so there's uh, just like evolution is just kind of. 
accepting the uh, the truth that you know everything is impermanent, and then whatever dogma, whatever belief, or whatever like um, truth you have today, it's 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 not there again tomorrow. You know, like Shi Jin Yang, one of my favorite uh, Vipassana teachers, said like today's enlightenment is tomorrow's mistake. You know. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's absolutely true on every single level. That's pretty much everything we can everything. end the podcast right now. <laughs> it's pretty much everything. <laughs> no, no, it's true. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Everything that is happening right now that can be accepted as truth in the present moment is not the truth later on. Yeah. I mean, with simple things, for example, you're hungry right now. The truth mm. is you are hungry. Now you're eating. Now you're full. The truth mm. is not being hungry any longer. Mm. It's simple as that, and it is something that you can apply on everyday situations. And this is why any dogma will always bring you out of that conscious awareness, if you will. I have a question for you, Frank. You sure. said automatically, first you were a bodybuilder, if you will, then you became an artist. Wouldn't you say that it is always the same nature, so to speak, in the background that is uh, essentially manifesting itself through different perceived actions in this reality? But in the end, it's always the same spirit for the lack of other words yeah i think it's the same i think it's um yeah right because like form is form is emptiness you know emptiness is form so like in the background yeah. it's always just it's the same you know like like i said before every corner every point in the field of awareness is the same but like the manifestation of of that emptiness takes on different forms you know mm. and then it's uh, for me like on, on on a more relative like i guess personal level like everything that i do i just kind of have this goal of like transcending you know like before i got into bodybuilding i was really into like vertical jumps and, and speed you know like i wanted to like that's how i started lifting weights i wanted to like jump higher and like run faster mm -hmm. it was that noise so like um just that intrinsic kind of desire to uh to keep like you know taking things to the next level, you know? And then like, with the vertical jump, that's like one of the best metaphors for it. Like my first video on YouTube is me like jumping on like, doing a box jump. And that's sort of like, it's a metaphor for like my entire like channel and my entire like journey in, in, in a way. So it's all like the same, it's all the same. Yeah. Thing. Like the thing about like non-duality is like it's all it's never just one way or the other it's always both and neither at the same time same same but different yeah, like yeah. the same talent yeah it depends on how you like which which side of the uh the the mountain you're you're peeking through you know mm -hmm. like the, the the mind and body problem like there there's neither the mind or the body but like if you look at reality from the inside there's only like the mind you know but if you look at look at it from the outside from like the third person like more quote unquote, objective perspective there's the there's matter or there's the brain you know but like they're they're really just one there's only one substance so a lot of some of a lot of people they get boggled down into just looking at, at like um digging the mountain through one side without realizing that when they dig from one side they're also digging from the other side mm. same time you know mm -hmm. so, <laughs> It's all, yeah, it's a, it's a, everything is different, but the same. It's, it's always neither or both. So it's kind of like uh, the cat, you know that that physicist, the uh, Schoenberg's cat? You know that no, physicist? I don't know that one. Uh, no, I don't a, know that one. This, uh, you, know, you, you know how um, they measure like the uh, the particles, right? And it's when they measure, you change this property. So like, uh, right. uh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, the particle is all, it's, it's both a wave and uh, a quote unquote point, you know, it's it's, right. it's it's always like it's it's both and neither at the same time. So like, yeah. and then this this physicist had made an analogy of how you put a cat in a box, and <clears throat> before you look at it, it's neither and it's neither in both dead or alive. And then like the the act of perception, of course, sort of depends on you know which how you perceive it, it changes its, its property. But like before you look at it, like it has a potentiality to be both dead and alive. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Sch Schrodinger's cat, right? Yeah, Schrodinger's cat, cat. That's it. Mm. Schrodinger, right? Yeah. Schrodinger, yeah. So Frank, I'm curious. What do you think <laughs> is the next is the next level? Of 
Uh, what? What do you think? Where is your channel going next? Uh, uh, I don't know. No idea. Just going to keep uh, updating, uploading my subjective experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have I like guess, the next yeah. few videos in mind and then depends. I guess it's even getting better with the better cameras, you know, 360 camera and everything. Dude, I'm, I'm curious for the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, with the 360, it definitely opens up a new dimension. It's like the, uh, the way the 360 uh, looks, it's kind of like, it's like a 360 degree mirror almost, right? Like instead of a, like, that's how your perception is in reality, like without the filter of the mind or without the filter of like the, the, the self kind of or the personal ego it's it's a, you, you, you don't really have a head from from the matter of the right experience you don't really have a head you don't have a body either the body and the head are just um, sort of this reflection like a tiny speck of reflection on this 360 degree mirror that we're all looking out through right now mm. and that's kind of like how the way that my, my 360 video looks yeah that's pretty sick Frank, you mentioned two words there. I think for the viewer's sake, let's focus it on that. Maybe they will get something out of it. I know okay. that many people that are not into spiritual topics, they can't really have a clear understanding. And it's pretty much like, yeah, telling a blind person how the world looks like if they never had an in-depth experience. But you mentioned two words there. So one was transcendence and the other one was enlightenment. Right. So can you talk about those two words separately and describe what it means to you? Because enlightenment especially gets thrown around quite often. We all read Jet McKenna, so therefore mm -hmm. maybe we have another perspective on it. Maybe not. It is a very tainted description, a tainted word lately, right. especially in the new age movement. Right. So right. let us know what you think about those two words. What does it mean to you? Um, for me, transcendence, it's, it's easier to explain. Transcendence just means... Um, I guess what we talked about before, the, the source going back to itself or, you know, just on a more like quantitative perspective, it's just, you know, if you bench 300 today and the next time you bench uh, 315, that's that's kind of a form of transcendence. Overcoming. And overcoming obstacles and, you know, um, adapting to a, a new uh, stressor and then, or a new stimuli and then reaching a new equilibrium and then doing it over and over again until it's sort of your baseline strength or in meditation or baseline awareness or in i guess um you know maybe with bodybuilding your your body fat set point you know gets sure. uh more and more efficient things like that um so i, I think i think like uh, just by being alive here you're you're transcending doesn't really matter. even if people who aren't into like self like actualization just I think just by being alive you're sort of automatically transcending all the time you know like even even the process of like just just reaching reaching death reaching old age is uh, it's kind of like a transcendence you know mm -hmm. because like for me like, I think death is like the ultimate like orgasm of life you know, when you're dead it's that's when you really go back Probably. to the source kind of and um, mm. And I think, um, speaking of enlightenment and talking about transcendence, they're kind of interconnected. And um, when Buddha's teaching, actually, uh, the, if you want me to explain enlightenment, um, for, for, uh, for, for, for the Buddha, uh, a lot of people think like he wants to end suffering through like, you know, bliss and, and uh, outer states of consciousness. But like, right. actually, the highest sort of form of meditation is actually uh, a state called uh, secession or a uh, blowout. Nirvana or Nirvana in uh, Sanskrit is actually just translated to, to a blowout or like a blackout. So it's not really like an outer state of consciousness. It's actually in a state where consciousness can't even can't even go like the, the awareness mm -hmm. can't even go. And that's sort of like a like a like a death. So, mm -hmm. so to me, enlightenment just means uh, means death and um but the of course not like the literal death um it's sort of like uh i guess you could say ego death but like ego is one of those words that are like really convoluted too that like, i don't really like to use sure. same with like spirituality and um mm -hmm. so so enlightenment is just means like the not the death of the self but sort of like um 
the death of your perception of what the self is kind of and um you can get really like sort of uh practical or um sort of um how should i put it technical technical with, technical yeah. with, the, with the term enlightenment because like if you study the um the Suda, the buddha uh, the buddha actually has um a few uh in requirements or insights that if you if you sort of realize them like experientially uh then you could be said to attain an enlightenment and um and those insights are uh emptiness and no self and suffering and they're they're interrelated yeah that is fascinating man because mm. where, where you finished uh yeah yeah you can you, you can you can uh, you can cut you can cut in yeah. no I, I want to let you flow this is why i kind of hang back here now it just reminds me of a not only one mushroom experience but three consecutive mushroom experience that i had in alkma the netherlands okay. before i started traveling the world five years ago oh, nice. because what we did there is we barricaded ourselves with a couple of friends for two weeks straight and we would just wake up and an empty stomach we would start eating mushrooms instead of breakfast right so we would just try to see what is what is there, what is there, what the true origin of all is. Yeah. And our approach was, let's try it with mushrooms. So we're going to start eating in the morning for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, right? All day, just mushrooms. And on the last day of those two weeks, yeah. I already experienced ego death. But now I really want to push the envelope and see what is beyond. Because the ego death, my frustration with the ego death was that it was still occurring in this reality. So even though after the ego death, I didn't identify with Bobby any longer, and I could see that all of this creation is basically right. I, and there is no separation, I was still frustrated that right. I found myself in creation. Right. So I used that analogy of a simulation in that sense. If mm. you would imagine reality to be on a main server, I still mm. was in the server, and I couldn't observe right. the computer from the outside. And that frustrated me. So therefore, I want to push further, and I ate 30 dried grams of magic mushrooms. On that note, for our viewers, 5 grams is already considered a heroic dose by Terence McKenna. And with that, I reached again this ego death, and I got outraged. I was so angry that I couldn't go further, and I said, all right, now I need all the mushrooms in this room. And my friends got together, they gathered, they couldn't take anymore. They started cooking mushroom teas, they started chopping up mushrooms. And in the end, we had like something around 100 dried grams of mushrooms. And I started eating and eating and eating and eating. It took me around about one hour to physically eat all of those mushrooms. And I wanted to see what's next. What is after understanding that there is no self? And this is when I totally passed out. So that was the threshold. There was only darkness and nothingness. And there was no existence. So no self seemed like the last step before nothingness. But nothingness is something that cannot be articulated. In reality, it looked like that, that I woke up around about 10 hours later. Totally shocked, totally blown out of my mind that I'm still existing. Because right. before that, I had no recollection of what just happened. Right. So therefore, your story just reminded me of that, that the extrapolation of no self is no existence and there is absolutely nothing yeah, that's yes that, that's great yeah that's exactly what i was going for but i think right. it's the uh, i think it's the uh the insight that you gain from like the moment before you lose consciousness and the moment that you return those are the most important sort of uh, moments for for insights into into no self because like at that moment you see how the entire structure of reality the entire structure of the external world or external world or your entire structure of the self or the matrix is constructed and correct once you kind of sort of see how that is the case how like everything is arising and passing even like the, your whole existence is rising and passing then you sort of um, you come back you exit the screen of like to the video game or the computer frame whatever you want to call it the program and then you come back and then you keep playing the game Exactly. Yeah. And you play the game even more enthusiastically, if you will, at I, least that was my case, because you understand that there is nothing else. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think a lot of people think like if you get into this spirituality thing, um, you're going to lose motivation to like do things in life or like 
um, enjoy the pleasures of life, but I, I don't think that's true. Mm. I think like you, you, you enjoy it even more. Like you feel things even deeper because without the filtering, yeah. without the filtering of uh, of the self, or at least the belief of the self, um, you you actually um, feel the sensations or feel the emotions of that is occurring in consciousness more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I would say no, you're, you're just less attached to to whatever you're doing, and by being less attached, when you go, you we kind of go back to the beginning of our conversation. You just like sort of more more in the flow, you know, more in the now. And then you're just like um, you're more present, and you just sort of embrace and engage in activities more fully. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I would say that this not being engaged in life so much any longer is a in between stage. I do not know where I read this. It's a pretty famous again a spiritual quote of. Before enlightenment, the tree is just a tree. During enlightenment, the tree is not a tree any longer. And after enlightenment, the tree is a tree again. Right. right? So therefore, you basically live as nothing happened, but with a complete other, I don't want to use the term intellectualization, maybe mm, yeah, some sort of internalization, if you will. Right. It becomes pretty much the same again in the end, as if mm. nothing truly changed. For the lack of better words we use our old names again and i say hi frank and you say hi bobby mm -hmm. and that's how we have to refer to each other mm -hmm. even though we know that there is depth to it yeah. but in the end what should i do should i call you transcendent being frank came down here pure consciousness man <laughs> i need to use some terminology right so therefore we call yeah, other, we it becomes other a tree Ming in taiwan mingling okay oh, mingling what is that <laughs> joke, we're, yeah. we're we're been calling uh, everybody the girl that he pulled last week Mingling. What is a Mingling? It's a name of a being. It's a name of a being. It's a girl. It's a girl. It's a label of a me suit that he, he put, <laughs> made a hole in. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll say like the word you said intellectualization. I think the, uh, the word that I, that I use is uh, recontextualization because it's not a matter of intellect. It's a, it's a matter of like, yeah. it's, a, so it's a kind of like a visceral feeling. Of being, you know, it's it's a, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a, like you say, it's the same, but it's different. Something like you know, you, you see a mountain that before enlightenment you see you perceive it as being solid, and during enlightenment you sort of in this in between stage that you know it feels kind of weird. And at first you see the mountain as a solid, you perceive that to be reality, and then you see the mountain as not a mountain, and you're like, oh, everything is a dream. But then if you think Everything's a dream. If, if you're still like have, making a duality or a, a distinction between reality and a dream, then you're still kind of li living in duality, you know. So like that's in between yes. stage. You, you're you're sort of going around and thinking that oh this uh, I need to wake up from a dream. This is a dream. It's not real. But then once you pass that threshold, like everything becomes neither real or unreal. It's neither a dream or reality, and and, and you're neither dead or alive. So, uh, like you said, you, you experience death, but you come back to life. But, but like, you know, what? What are you? Are you dead or alive? You had an ego death. Like, if your entire structure of the self is the ego, but now you saw through the ego, are you dead or alive? You know, it's your. It's always like yeah. both and neither. You know. And with same with the like the whole like in, enlightenment kind of stuff, like we talked about before. It's it's. It's at the same time like everybody is, is enlightened in, in, from from a certain perspective from from one one side of the uh, the whole you know from one side of the mountain you know look, looking through this one side every everybody's enlightened because like awareness everyone has awareness you know awareness if you're aware if you're talking to to me right now you're aware and every like I said every corner every point in the winter is, is equally awake but it's 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 enlightenment that that's getting enlightened not not the person that the, the ego or the the self it was never alive because the ego is just, it's just a thought you know thoughts themselves aren't really alive because one thought can't really think another thought into existence just like the sensation on your forehead can't really feel or perceive the sensation on your knee you know if you if your knee is hurting the, and then you have now you have a uh, you you have an itch on your head. Those two sensations are distinct sensations. Since the it's a, it's awareness that's aware of them. Not the, the, not it's not like one sensation is aware of the other sensation. So one thought is never aware of the the next thought. It's the it's awareness that's that's being aware of those thoughts. But that awareness is always just there. 
and so it's like the, your whole entire existence is just like awareness being aware of itself or if you, 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 you thoughts are like you you are aware of your thoughts but that's the same thing as saying that's just awareness being aware of itself and there's just that's it there's nothing more to it than that it's just you know and that's why they, they, a lot of gurus tell you that you're enlightened because you know um it's, it's wakefulness that wakes up to itself and it's never been really it's never been asleep in the first place because the same awareness is looking out through you're looking out through the same like feel of awareness you are now but uh, as when you were like a baby you know <clears throat> so it's just it's always right. it's there and then right. but the awareness yeah. is the same the focus is different yeah yeah the, the awareness is always just the same <clears throat> and then some that's the same thing as saying you can never the ego can can really can never be enlightened or the ego can never be transcended because the ego is just like the, the chair but then when, when you perceive the chair you perceive the self or perceive a thought you give awareness to that object so in that moment that object is aware because there's only awareness yeah yeah what do you think about the pursuit of permanent ego death uh i don't there's no i don't think there's the ego is never alive so you can never be killed but if you keep actually if you keep pursuing uh an ego death that's actually like in a sense quote unquote making the ego more alive than it is you know because you're 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 making it into a thing to me the ego doesn't exist until you like make it to be you know it's like you imagine it to have some kind of impact on something and you imagine it to to be negative or you imagine it to be alive but the ego is just another thought and all thoughts are just arising and passing, kind of like the, the the blowing of the wind outside or the barking of the dogs. So you're trying to kill your ego or trying to stop your thoughts, which a lot of people think it's like the bedrock of spirituality. It's almost like trying to stop like the wind from blowing or trying to stop an earthquake. You know, it's it's as absurd <laughs> as that. It's just a natural course of things. You know. Yeah. Part of the game. Impossible yeah, all, to yeah. erase. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but just the character of the avatar. I like to see it that way. Yeah, the character yeah. of the avatar right. I'm playing here, like in GTA, basically. So, therefore, why would I like to delete Franklin or Trevor in right. GTA 5? This is how I see it. It doesn't make sense. You can't. Yeah. You yeah, can't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Might as well have fun with it. Yeah. And then, if you, I mean, you try to kill the ego, is just like, I mean, there, there's. They're just there's just pixels that are there you know that and, and like i said emptiness is form form is emptiness it's all it's all just different manifestation of, of nothingness it's yeah. all it's all it's like, the, the ego is completely empty and, and subsequential you know so there's there's yep. no, no point trying to capture or try to like delete something that was already deleted it, was, it wasn't even there <laughs> 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 Yep, that's yeah, awesome. Good, yeah. We, have, we have that joke here, right? When you talk with each other, what's that joke like? There is no one there. Like, how do you use that joke all the time? I don't know. Charlie's been saying that a lot of these days. Yeah. It's like, dude, like, like, every day something happens, like, boom, there's no one there. There's no one there, dude. Yeah, there's no one in the gym. We were in the gym today. No one was in the gym. <laughs> no one's in the gym. No one's in the gym. No one is in the podcast. It's an empty room. Hang out, man. <laughs> there's no one here, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Dude. <laughs> You have to say something, Bobby. My mind is blank. Hmm? My good, mind good, is blank. Good. No, actually, oh, actually, I'm no hanging. It's, it, it's good that there's no one there. <laughs> I'm actually hanging back, and I'm waiting for you to steer it into some direction. But I don't think that will happen. Uh -huh. So therefore, we can just freestyle it. Whatever we might want to talk about, we can. It's I'm cool. I have something. I have something yeah. interesting. Uh, do you Go guys have you guys seen the podcast with Joe Rogan and Ben Gretzel? I think you. Uh, I, I haven't seen that. I think I did. I think I did partially. That's the transhumanist guy, right? Yeah, he goes in a really interesting direction because I don't know if, if it's he that said that, but there is a Buddha project. It's called the Buddha project. Oh. And they're trying uh -huh. to engineer basically enlightenment through uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, so they, they, they talked about that on Joe Rogan? Um, I found out about that in, I guess, the book of Ben Gertz. So I saw the podcast, I bought his book or downloaded it somewhere, and then I read it in the book. Yeah. Okay. So, but the, but the author went on Joe Rogan. Um, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll take a listen. Mm. So we, me and Charlie, were just talking about how, like, on Joe Rogan podcast, like, no one's ever talked about non-duality. So I was surprised someone was talking about engineering enlightenment for AI. 
I want to check it out. Mm. I mean, bro, there is no one on Joe's podcast. It's like no one is talking there, man. No one is talking. It's an empty studio. It's just, it, it, it just, it just golf happening to itself. <laughs> yeah. Everything is just golf happening to itself, happening to itself. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. There was no one on Joe Rogan, like, I guess, talking about enlightenment. Yeah. I guess Sam Harris is pretty woke, but he was never going really deep. Yeah, he, he, he never went really deep on the Joe Rogan podcast, I feel like. Yeah. But he's. No, he, it was very uh, political. Yeah, he's always political. But uh, you, have you checked out Sam Harris's meditation app? It's actually, it's not bad. It's pretty good. He goes. No, I haven't checked it out. It's pretty. Yeah, he goes pretty deep in it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Charlie, you can tell us about like the. Uh, the guy. Yeah, tell us about the podcast. Yeah. What did you say? What's the plan with the Buddha project? Yeah. Uh, they basically want to. Um, yeah, there's another guy called David Pierce. I guess Bobby has heard of him already. I think I've heard of him. David, David Pierce. Pierce, like uh, uh, Tristan, 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 Tristan talks a lot about him, and uh, he wants yeah. to end all suffering on this planet. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So basically, yeah. he wants to end suffering in human beings, but also in animals. So he wants to re-engineer. He's a vegan. Exactly, of course, he's a vegan. Of course. <laughs> and I mean, the idea is not bad, you know, to end all suffering. But basically, the whole thing means that if you want to end all suffering, you need to end all life. Otherwise, you can. Exactly. Die. That's a, that, that's what we talked about before, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's what that's what was one of those realizations during being vegan, and this is why I had to stop basically because I always like to extrapolate an idea, you know. So if we talk about bodybuilding, for example, you do not have to become Ronnie Coleman necessarily, but you could extrapolate the idea of bodybuilding to get to a Ronnie Coleman character, and then you could backtrack the steps and see what is needed to get to that point. And during that period, you could stop somewhere where you feel comfortable, if so at all. And the same. It just applies to veganism. If you look at the extrapolation of veganism, you will see that the extrapolation becomes antinatalism. Mm. Or, and this is the idea of that guy, to basically turn er every herbivore, in, no, every carnivore, excuse me, into a herbivore, right? So there is no mm. suffering anymore. Of course, neglecting bacterial death, cell splitting, so on and so forth, just talking about that yeah, physical realm of carnivores eating herbivores. So therefore, people become vegan, sterilize themselves, don't procreate any longer, population control, and then in the end, all the bad carnivores, because creation is bad, has to be tampered with as well and turned into herbivores. I think that that is just not accepting the current state of isness, not accepting creation without sounding like a religious person. Yeah, for me, I don't want to cut off the talk straight away, but for me, it doesn't seem like a good idea. I have to judge it. Yeah, but let's extrapolate. Let's talk. I guess the uh, the the idea of, of being in a per perpetual state of non-suffering is kind of like trying to kill the ego. You know, like there. Yes. It's it's all impermanent. Like even 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 bliss is impermanent. Mm. So trying to erase suffering is like Charlie said, trying to end our life on in existence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, I just exactly. wrote a book. It's called the, the mm. Hedonistic Imperative by David Pierce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course it's hedonistic. Yeah, yeah. The there has to be a hedonistic perspective, nihilistic, hedonistic perspective, vegan perspective on this life. Something is wrong with the reality. We need to change it now. We are dirty humans that piss and shit and fuck. It's dirty. Let's sterilize. Let's transcend humanity. Let's become the next life form. Let's not eat the flesh. Kill all the carnivores. And in the end, we just not exist to be in a constant orgasm of enlightenment. Yeah, all of those ideas that we even discussed here, I think, have been perverted in this modern movement. And I see a dark agenda behind it. It all comes with this premise of mm. enlightenment, eco-friendly, green, vegan, plant-based. I see a huge risk in that movement. And I see that this is really steered by egolomaniac organizations that want to totally take over creation. So I'm not subscribing to that idea at all. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Have you heard about that, Frank? Basically, about that whole plant-based agenda. No. Uh, yeah, it's go it goes pretty deep. I don't agree with everything, but exactly what Bobby says, it goes into that direction. Because you all know, like the book uh, "A Brave New World" by Al Aldous Huxley. Right. And there, they also don't eat 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 meat anymore. It's like kind of for forbidden. Mm. So people become like kind of docile and you know like chill, like low libido. And um, some people really struggle with veganism. They have exactly these symptoms. So people say like, or some people say, okay, could go into this direction. Like, uh, we don't eat meat like in a couple of years from now people get weak and uh, we get empowered Damn. Oh, wow. it seems to be 
it seems to be an infiltrated movement. So if you look at the origins of veganism, you will see that, sure, in Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, it has been a practice to transcend the animal body, the flesh, so to speak, through a form of asceticism, right? Fasting, obtaining from flesh, from flesh foods. So in order to lighten the body, if you will, and to understand what consciousness, what spirit is, if you will, mm -hmm. and to get away from humanity. Because mm -hmm. if you are involved if you're embedded in very human tasks such as eating socializing fucking it's very primal and it can keep you away from actualizing your consciousness not that it has to but it can so yeah. therefore yeah. to abstain from those things to not talk you know it yourself you went to this with us on a retreat yeah. to, to eat yeah. lightly to not eat what the human yeah. body desires the flesh body can bring you more into this conscious awareness state and this movement, this original spiritual movement has been infiltrated by Rothschilds, Rockefeller, so on and so forth. And especially Primal Edge Health, Tristan Haggard has a great podcast on that show. And he talked about one guy in particular. His name was Lord Birkenhead. And there was this article from 1925, I believe. So almost 100 years ago. And he described the world in 100 years. And he talked about that. Yes, it is true that cellulose, plant foods, cannot be digested by humans. Mm. So therefore, we will replicate it in a laboratory, plant-based meat, and then we will go a step further and create lab-grown real meat out of tissues from animal excretions, and we will feed it to the slave population, so to speak, mm. right? Weaken the society to population control again. So to lower this dirty human yeah, flesh virus here on this planet, eradicate it all and leave the real meat for the ruling class sounds pretty dark <laughs> i went on an excursion but yeah there's always there are always two sides of the spectrum yeah it's an interesting fail yeah because like it from from the from the perspective of the absolute like the, there's nothing wrong with reality you know like everything is perfect like with me and charlie kind of talked about this these last couple of yeah. days when i just feel like you know like you can you can't really make a mistake if you're if you're connected to the flow, you know, mm -hmm. right. like there, there there's no mistake to be made, in a sense. And even 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 when you're when you, even when you feel like you're you're sort of altering reality or trying to change something, that that's where you, even if you feel like on the relative level you make a mistake right now, like from from the perspective of holism, um, that the universe sort of has a way of like course correcting itself almost. And like if if, if the universe is infinite, then you can't you can't really have a mistake with the infinity mm. you know like you know what i mean it's a it's a, it's hard to put into words mm -hmm. it's like it's like even 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 the feeling of making a mistake is part of the process of perfection in, in, a, in a way right. right so like yeah what do you like you said oh, it, go, go. It's, it's it's always one way it's always one way or the other you know like it's it's always both this way or that way so like yeah yeah you can you, you can try to change things but at the same time like n nothing is nothing's changing nothing's moving it, uh, the, the whole universe is standing completely still but on on the other side of the extreme everything's moving extremely fast kind of like einstein's theory of relativity when you everything's moving really fast you know the speed of light yeah everything just slows down everything comes to a complete halt in a sense, too, you know. What are your thoughts on transhumanism? What do you think about that movement? Uh, I, I like the idea of it, but like mm -hmm. I haven't really bought into it too much recently. But like I think, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's just a natural progression of things, and yeah. along the way, along the way, like there, there's gonna be, it's gonna cause some kind of destruction, obviously, kind of like the '60s when there's a psychedelic era revolution. You know, there's a lot of fucked exactly. up things happen, but then there's a lot of beautiful things, a lot of progression that that took place too. So I'm I'm actually pretty excited about it. Mm. And, and yeah, I'm on the fence about it a bit because I used to be 100% bought basically. I right. bought into the concept. I loved everything about it. Yeah. Looking back as a young child, one of the reasons why I got into bodybuilding is because I was overweight when I was nine years old to 12 years old, I was constantly overeating and I was a fat chubby kid. And then once I got the tools, so to speak, to lose the weight, I got obsessed mm. with transcending to change the human body. I was always watching Power Rangers, Iron Man and whatnot. And there was always this fantasy mm. of overcoming the weakness. Mm. And transhumanism yeah, basically gave me a hope in that sense to see, hmm, this is actually really possible. One day I don't have to be a mere mortal any longer. 
mm. we can become gods, so on and so forth. But now seeing who is behind that movement, I have to say that I'm not looking at it from the same perspective any longer. Because if it truly would be some godly force that is manifesting itself in a technocratic vessel of God knows what kind of performance technology here, then I would say, yeah, cool, all right, let's listen to this new consciousness that is arising. But in many ways, it's just people that are programming an algorithm. Mm. And I see it with YouTube as well. So as I said already, yeah, your channel, for example, in my opinion, isn't getting the exposure that it should. But if you would use some titles that are saying, shocking, transformation, crazy, Frank Yang is doing this and that, I think it would get more clicks. And then you would have to censor yourself as well. So in a sense, what I see with YouTube is we are conditioning ourselves. You can see it in lab red experiments. Mm. They put a little bit of sugar here, a little bit of cocaine there. Then they put a trap here with electricity. When the mouse right. runs into the electricity, it decides not to run into it. It's not like somebody forces the mouse to get away from the electricity, but intuitively it won't go to that spot, but it will go to the sugar. And it's the same here. When I put something on YouTube that is controversial, I will get demonetized, right? If mm. I choose to do something more user-friendly, I will get monetized. So thumbs up, a pat on the back. Congratulations, mm. you're on the right path, right? Then you use a specific title that gets more clicks. So if you follow that, you're basically conditioning yourself. Therefore, I cannot see this algorithm or the technology, the technology that we have in place right now as something benevolent and something absolutely neutral because there's always an agenda behind it, it seems. There's right. somebody steering this into a certain direction. And yeah, the same with anything, right? 5G the control of the masses, social media, which has become the new TV. Mm. I do not think that this transhumanist movement can be neutral and can serve the humanity. I don't see it any longer, unfortunately. And therefore, yeah, I see it as a very, very dark force taking over population in a bad, bad, quote unquote, way. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Because I was, hey, just go on, Frank. I was just thinking that um, we, we also from from a certain perspective, um, the, the devil is is God, you know, because like a God that's omniscient or infinite must include must include evil as well. Yeah, I agree. I call this concept spiritual racism, if you will, a non-understanding <laughs> of duality. Many people talk about this in quote unquote bad trips when you try to label something and they ask me how to pr how to prevent a bad trip. Mm. I'm like, dude, you know, if you don't label it, then you don't have a bad trip, right? Yeah. It is the acceptance. So if you take the example of a regular human, right? So let's say a happy guy goes out of his doorstep, goes through the city and sees many, many people and is super happy about his experience. And then let's take the same example, but now the guy is a racist. And he goes out and he sees a foreigner, then he sees a black person and he gets outraged. His day sucks. So it's not that the reality sucks, it's his perception, so to speak, right? So it is his labeling of those things that occur in his reality, if you yeah. will. This is why this negative emotion occurs, if you will. Right. And then the same applies to spiritual psychedelic experiences. So mm -hmm. if I see God, if I see transcendence and I'm happy about it, okay, cool. That's my labeling. And then when mm -hmm. I see Satan, I see the devil, and I become upset and scared, yeah, that's my perception of it. So if you could accept both, there would be no division. And therefore, right. there would be no spiritual racism in that sense. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> concept because I was talking about that with uh, Frank on our uh, podcast did a couple of days ago. I feel like, you know, the universe is so big and we always talk about is there like some other life form somewhere? And mm. what Frank says really resonates with me that this could be like the natural progression of things. So perhaps I guess the, there is life on other planets and perhaps the evolution on other planets is almost exactly the same. So people evolve and then at the end we create like the, this, this, this uh, consciousness, this, this, this supercomputer. And then instead of going to all the planets, you all go inwards and you create a new universe. Mm. And then it's like mm. an infinite loop of your new universes. It's infinite, 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 always like, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, this was even presented in Stargate, a series out of the 90s back in the day. I don't know if you guys watched it. I was a pretty big fan of that one. And you can't even travel physically because the distance is just way too far. And therefore, either you have a Stargate which connects nearby planets or you have 
like an universal internet where you can connect consciously or you can send some sort of machine and embed your consciousness into that. So this is how you bring together the universe. Yeah, makes much more sense than traveling physically. Our bodies are way too frail for that anyways. The distance would be hundreds and hundreds of years. It doesn't make sense. So that seems to be the only logical travel path, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, Who knows? Me, me and Charlie were talking about today after we did the guided meditation. Uh, we, we did a guided meditation on the uh, distances, the construction of the mind as well, you know, mm. from that perspective. So, like, there, there's really no distance to anything. Yeah. Listen, Frank, totally I want to... Uh, oh, no, yeah. wait, wait, you going to ask me? No. Now, I want to ask you something not totally different, but we scratched the surface of that topic in the beginning, and I somehow want to know your stance on that before okay. we can move further. I just want to know, because you mentioned in many videos that you were thinking about veganism left and right, so what is your current perspective on veganism for you? I just want to know that. Um, for me, I have, I have no, no thoughts about it, but uh, I, I do agree with you that... Um, like, like for example, during the during our meditation retreat for ten days, you see eat vegan food, and then you, you do feel more like sort of clear, clear minded. You do you, your conscious, your, your your awareness does seem to to raise when you're going on a vegan diet for for that period. You know, and right. the moment you try to restrict yourself, that you kind of backfires. But so I think there is a time and place for everything. You know, like you know, for maybe this phase of my life, I want to I want to eat less meat and. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with with either way with veganism or not, and uh, I think I think it's something that I might I might experiment with in the future, or however mm -hmm. long I don't know, just to you know see the impact it has on my body and my mind, sure. and also um yeah, it's kind of like no fat, you know, it's like mm -hmm. I think veganism is it's, it's kind of like no fat. It's like if you if you're not attached to <laughs> the no fat of diet, yeah. <laughs> It's like if you, your identity is not attached to it, then um, I mean, you can experiment with it. And this change is always, this change is always good, you know. And then, um, like that, that's just, I think it's the same thing with with like morality too. Like, we, like the, the reason why morality is such a big thing in Buddhism is not because like enlightenment is about making you a, a better person, you know. The reason why morality is a big thing and why people infiltrate it so much nowadays in like. Like if you go to ask any Bud like Buddhist today, like in, in Taiwan, for example, like they think like morality or compassion is like the only thing that that Buddhism is about, which is just not true. You know, Buddhism is about like you know understanding and contacting the the ultimate reality, and because it, 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 it's hard to get into that state, you know, it's hard to like meditate or steal your mind and get insights into the the ultimate reality. If you're thinking about like the shitty thing you did yesterday or something like that, so like the precept of like of the Buddhist teaching is so that you can have a, a mind clear enough to not think about your bullshit so much that you can sort of you know receive some insights into the ultimate reality. But ultimately, that's sort of like a byproduct and sort of like a means to an end, not really like the end goal. So I, uh, I think Buddhism is uh, sorry, veganism is, is kind of like the same concept for me in my mind it's like you know it's a, it's a good tool to, to use once in a while maybe but it, like it, it, i'm not like attached to either you know veganism or not you know it, 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 it all depends on context and like the situation and like where you are on your your journey and stuff right 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 yeah, yeah. No, that makes perfect sense so you mean you follow those moral pathways in order for you to not fuck up in real life and then to regret it, quote unquote, right? So you're just in this constant state of no external failure, basically. So you don't have to fluctuate and feel like you're a bad person, but at least that constant can be stable. Is that what you mean? Um, it's almost like uh, it's, it's sort of like uh, it's just like um, like something that you, you you can practice here and there in order to ch you know, for lack of a better word, transcend yeah yeah so it's kind of like it, it's just like it, there's a space for it like there, there there's some kind of benefit to it like here and there if if you're if you don't like let it backfire yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. like, like I, I that the, i think those are just correlated. it depends on the on the person too you know the, the charlie might like 
Charlie my next reach the next st stage of consciousness by being a raw vegan. And I might not, you know. Your, your, I was a raw vegan. Yeah. So it all de depends on, on the individual as well. And like yeah, I said, where, sure. where that individual is on the spectrum of his journey at this moment. I mean, it's, fun, yeah, it's, absolutely. Funny, it's funny you say that because since I hang out more with you, Frank, I started to drink al more alcohol. So perhaps my next stage is to eat less healthy and to just let go. <laughs> <laughs> but then don't, don't get the attached to the idea of letting go too, you know. Yeah, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So you feel like no. being it's also like fasting, right? More or less like a tool. Kind of, kind of. 100%. Yeah. I think, 100% fasting I think practice. To, to put it in a more like, you know, some like moderation, you know, moderation is everything. You know? Like take the middle way. If you want to just be safe, you know, take the middle way. But at the same time, middle way, you know, like like we th Bobby talked about, we, me and Bobby both agree that um, when you have two sides of the extreme covered, the middle way is covered as well, you know. So taking the middle way is actually the same as saying to take two sides of the extreme depends on like the, the context in, in the situation. So it's all kind of exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the question becomes if you can even go the middle way, you know, it's always easier said yeah. than done. Yeah. I'm sure that, I don't know, my parents told me as well to go the middle way. You know? yeah. What does that mean? And where's can the, you yeah. even? Well, where's are the you genetic? Uh, yeah, where's the middle way? And are you genetically predispositioned? to be chilled and to go the middle way. Can you even cope with that? I would get depressed if I would, probably, and, and right? Middle, because that is not my nature. Right. The, the middle way is yeah. always changing anyway, because everything is changing. Once you reach exactly. the middle way, it's not the middle way anymore, you know? Like, once you reach the side, the extreme, it's not, it's, it becomes the other side. So, like, it's kind of like what, was, what I said before. You're not really moving at all. You're not going anywhere, but at the same time, you are. Yeah. Yeah, you kind yeah, of sit in still. Because if you can... Yeah, yeah. To close up the chapter of veganism, I just want to know your opinion on it in this why. So for me to summarize this, I agree with that. It is a practice that has its place. It is practiced for thousands and thousands of years. A fasting practice, an ascetic practice, if you will, if you treat it as such, you can temporarily achieve new knowledge, if you want to call it that, to get away from the flesh body, to malnourish your flesh body, essentially. To understand different aspects to focus on others but in the end if you stick with it mm -hmm. the ultimate the ultimate enlightenment the ultimate transcendence this is what you said already frank it is death and this is what veganism would lead you to if you would extrapolate the idea of dietary veganism and you start with a whole food plant-based diet then you go into a raw vegan diet then you go into a fruitarian diet because fruit is the only karmically free food that you will get on this planet so to speak the only food that is given to you with no violence you can pick it off the tree and then you extrapolate that again and you don't want to do any harm you start to become a liquidarian and then a breatharian in the end and you try to transcend Biological limitations are still real in this realm. So therefore, yeah, I know we hear stories about real breatharians, but as for right now, I have to see one that is truly successful. What that truly means is to die. So if you sit for two, three, four weeks with no water, no food, you will essentially die. So you will transcend that way, one <laughs> way or the other. Right. But is it sustainable for the human vessel? That is always the question. And therefore... I think that it is a great short-term idea, but long-term, only if you want to truly transcend, then go vegan. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Travel to the next dimension. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. Yeah, that's about veganism. Yeah, any other topics that you want to discuss, Charles? We went on all kinds of rants. No, it's good. It's good. I think it's good, yeah. It's really good, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I would also like to ask Frank here publicly is, because Frank is always in good shape, you know, like really good shape. But True, I'm jealous. Bob, yeah, but Bobby also right now again. And nah, nah, how, how, I'm fat. Fr Frank, why? I mean, you link you link being in shape also with spirituality kind of, right? Ah, uh, a little bit. What, what, what's your reasoning <laughs> behind that? You always talk about like aesthetics, you know, like, because I would think like if you train like for over 10 years, perhaps you're getting bored, bored about that, but you don't seem bored about like training and stuff. Uh, I'm pretty bored of training, actually. Really? Oh, <laughs> I'm just going to maintain... Yeah. How, do you, how do you link then the, the, the bodybuilding to, to spirituality and to your, to your path? Oh, I guess in, in, a, in a sense, there's different levels to it. Um, for me, like, for, for me now, it's really hard for me to distinguish what's, what's spiritual and what's not. 
anymore, you know, because like, yeah, man. like I said, everything is emptiness. And then the body is just the manifestation of emptiness into like a certain form, you know. So whether even the, the, the feeling you have about bodybuilding is bodybuilding spiritual or not, it, it's itself empty, you know, even emotions itself, like mm -hmm. you, you penetrate the part of the sensations of what gives rise to emotions, it's, it's, it's empty as well. So from that level, there's there's really no difference. Anything you do is quote unquote spiritual. Anything the divine is in everything. And um, from a more practical or metaphorical or technical level, like I think the the the, the path to craft an aesthetic body like that that process is actually it could be really you could you could you you could take away a lot of lessons that you learn from 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 fitness and, and put into say, meditation. For sure. Because it's about like periodization, it's about like, you know, just the fact what you put in your body has an effect on your mind or yeah. your body and like, um, you know, like I always say that if I'd ever gotten to bodybuilding, if I'd ever really care about even just maintaining now, I would be just like, uh, I'll, I'll eat so much shit or I'll just like, you know, drink so much alcohol, I, I wouldn't even have like the capacity to meditate. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So, like, I guess fitness sort of kept me in check. In a, in in a sense, if you keep your meat suit in, in in good good form, I guess that that could in a way like house your 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 consciousness in a way, even though it's the, the it's all just consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Uh, and also like the uh the actually one of the 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 metaphors that I like to use and a lot of other meditation teachers like to use as well is to compare. Meditation to like the fitness, like fitness in your mind, you know, it's mm -hmm. that they're, they're, they're both about, you know, sort of stay, staying fit and um, sort of a, a form of, of training, you know, and the, the, the discipline and then the mindset that goes into both aspects are, are, are very similar. You know, you sort of have to like psych yourself up to do a strong determination sitting in a, in a, in a, in a meditation retreat where you just sit for one hour. Without or like, yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like powerlifting in, in a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely true. In the end, the biggest muscle that you exercise in bodybuilding is always the mind, so to speak. Right. And all of those steps yeah, you, can, exactly. first and foremost, yeah, yeah, yeah keep I your. First and foremost, keep you fit, keep your body fit, and so therefore it will become easier to practice spirituality, if you will. And on the same token, spirituality is about discipline as well, as so is life. So therefore, everything that works in life, I found, That's is connected. always applicable onto, onto everything. Yeah, exactly. Onto everything. So the detail, the discipline, the right. uh, everything that you put into bodybuilding, you can put onto anything else in life, and it will function, it will work. So no matter if you want to put into music, into art, whatever it is, it will always work. So therefore, bodybuilding is a a universal truth, if you will. It's an aspect of it. It is right. back traceable, and you can always apply it. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it's interesting that you said that otherwise you would just eat shit and be drunk or whatever. It's the same here. The only reason why I'm not still popping eight ecstasy pills and raving my ass off is because of <laughs> bodybuilding. Honestly, that's the only reason. It's yeah, motivated initially by vanity. Because I didn't want to become a thin junkie, but then ultimately right. you understand what you're doing to yourself. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a valuable lesson. Good. Very yeah. grateful for bodybuilding. Frank and me, Frank and me right. were actually arguing. I mean, you're not arguing. You're agreeing that Z, Z is, you know, Z. Is? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you are. You are saying that perhaps he was like super enlightened. He was just like trolling everyone, you know. That would be funny. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. His Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> fake woke. Yeah, we actually have this amazing woman. Me and Frank are pretending to be fake woke, but he's actually really woke. I guess he is, man. Like, the <laughs> kind of bodybuilding, it's disease, dude. We actually, Z's, bro. We actually talk about that. He always, he always, he always asks people if they're aware. He's this? Yeah, he's always like, that's one of his memes. He's like, you wear, bro? You wear? Are you, are you Myron, bro? Yeah, you Myron, man? Yeah. You're aware? You're aware? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he actually, Frank and me. But he went, like, he, he went back to the source. Yeah. And he did. He did. He transcended. Yeah. Mm. I mean, me and Frank, mm. we all, all often talk about like people and ask ourselves if they're like truly woke, you know. So I guess mm. this was pretty far already. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he left us behind. 
We still yeah. have to catch up. Yeah. What What do you guys think about Eckhart Tolle, by the way? I think he's mm. woke. Woke, huh? <laughs> like or, or Jim McKenna, people they some people don't know Jim McKenna yet. Mm. It's hard to get into Jim McKenna if you haven't read him. If you haven't read like other kind of spirituality stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's kind of like a spiritual troll or something like that, you know. Like like <laughs> he's kind of like the uh the the Marshall you know Marshall Duchamp. I no, I don't. Um, you heard uh you heard of Marshall Duchamp? No, I haven't. Was that? He's like an artist, but like he 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 got into uh he put a to toilet in an art gallery and he calls it art, and uh, he was just trying to make people question what artists, you know, kind of like Jeff McKenna mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an art, he's a, like anti art artist kind of, yeah. You know? But yeah. I, I like that yeah. kind of style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you couldn't too, right? you could think of him like that. I'm not too sure. Sometimes I think he's just trolling. And in many aspects, I'm sure he does, because I saw that aspect, of course, coming from a vegan perspective when he's talking about eating beef and the vegetarian looks at him mm. and he doesn't care, you know, because he's so present and non-dual and enlightened. He doesn't give a fuck. He orders the beef noodles. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely a troll job, 100 percent. And therefore, I agree that he definitely likes to troll here and there. But in the end, the essence of the book, spoiler alert, is, of course, the I am realization. And in many ways, mm -hmm. there is nothing more to it. Yeah. I truly cannot see it going any further with any other practice without having an attachment or a dogmatic belief system. So in the end, what you can talk about with human words will always be I am. Everything else is just already falsified. So therefore, there is truth in his troll. Right. Yeah. And then it's kind of the, the, the other truth in the troll is kind of like, you know, um, it's kind of like, He's saying all those things about 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 enlightenment and spirituality, but he's almost pointing to the fact that, like you say, words can't really describe it. So, like, there's in in a sense, there's there's no such thing as enlightenment, you know. But then, like, he's he, he, right. like he's just trying. He, he wants you to question everything, including enlightenment itself. Yeah, yeah. It but, seems to me like he's really fed up with the spiritual practices the spiritual labels what you need to do in order to be spiritual it has become like a spiritual club again the spiritual club you have to do yoga yeah. you have to yeah. meditate yeah. you have to be vegan you know those three things if you're not then you're not spiritual enough yeah. so i think he just wants to really show you that that has nothing to do with it yeah exactly and i yeah. think that is uh, spot on that's spot mm. on i mean what else is there to what else is there to do once you realize that You are awareness and there is nothing more to it. What else should we talk about? So in the end, the whole podcast here is mental masturbation. We should stop. <laughs> exactly, it exactly. So it's like a, it's yeah. like a stuff. It's like a, it's kind of like the it's it's a enlightenment. It's like a, co a cosmic joke, you know. And you know, yeah, we just punch, we just the punchlines. Mm, yeah. nice. So by like so by like um sort of like by talking about it so much, he's actually like making fun of almost and. I'm making fun yeah, of for sure. <laughs> yeah, because you're getting away from it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It's as if we would sit here and talk for three days and we don't go work out, but we're talking about bodybuilding. Yeah, kind it's of. Kind of retarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of retarded. I don't know if you know Miyamoto Musashi. Miyamoto Musashi, the greatest samurai. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's my tattoo here as well. I don't know if you can oh. see it. So it's Miyamoto Musashi, and he lived in the 1500 in Japan. The biggest, most famous, most accomplished mm. Japanese Ronin samurai. Mm -hmm. And there is this beautifully illustrated manga called Vagabond about his life story. I can only recommend that, man. It's the, for me personally, the best piece of art that I've ever read, that I ever saw. And there's always the constant talk about the ego, the constant talk about becoming something and then not becoming. And it's this constant battle. And he finds himself surrounded by three samurais. And they're just talking about the sword. And he gets this frustration and he said how ridiculous the scene is that three swordsmen are sitting together and they're talking about the sword without using it. Mm. And that scene on its own, when you try to analyze, you see mm. what it really means. Right. It means that, yeah, if you talk about something, you abstract the whole meaning of it. And in the end, you're getting further away from it than you've been before. Right. So, yeah. right. Exactly. The spoken Tao is not the Tao anymore. Right, right. Yeah. 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 
Okay. That's good. good. That's, that's, that's a, a, that was a good ending. Right. It's Can't talk about it anymore. Yeah. Hey, bro, it was great meeting you, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was great connecting to you. Thanks to Charles. No worries, dude. I wanted to connect you guys because I always love to connect people. That's kind of my role here. The yeah, thanks a lot, man. It was awesome. Uh, no, it was fun. Huh? No worries, dude. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, when, when, when are you coming to Taiwan? Oh, yeah, that'd be when fun. coming to Taiwan. Charlie wants yeah, to be awesome next year. Yeah, I'm coming back. Oh, you're to moving Germany, there? So perhaps, perhaps January, yeah, that's awesome so. because I'm planning on going back to Thailand in December. First and foremost, we're going to go to Australia and we're going to do the farming documentary. So that will be around about October, November-ish. And then December, I'm headed over to Thailand. And yeah, whilst in Asia, why not, man? If you guys are up there, I would love to visit. Sure. Dope, dude. Dope. So I guess Sweet. people, I would just want to tell people that are listening here, uh, Bobby, if people want to find you, I guess, uh, where can they find you? YouTube channel is the best? Yeah, sure, man. YouTube channel, Bobby's Perspective, bobbysperspective.com, Instagram, Bobby's Perspective. Bobby, 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 enough, Bobby. I, that's it. <laughs> it's, not, it's no one there anywhere on the YouTube channel. There's no one there. Empty videos. Exactly. Nothing to watch. Zero videos. clicks. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And, uh, Frank, for you yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-upload this on my channel as well. So, therefore, everybody, please check out Frank Yang's channel as well. And, of course, Charles Rufio. Everything in the description box. Hey, did I pronounce that right? Is it Rufio or how do I pronounce it? You pronounce it French. It's Rufio, yeah. But now I'm just yeah. called like Coach Charles. No one can pronounce it. Coach Charles. Done. Yeah. I transcended out. my name, yeah. Transcended it. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, so enlightened. So spiritual. Good, huh? Good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for everyone, thanks a lot for watching. Also, thanks a lot to you two guys to, to do the podcast. Like, I wanted to do that for so long. It's so Thank you. We were able to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Frank. Can just end the live stream. You put, the, you click on the button, and then we are gone, man. Oh fuck! Go to the next dimension. Well. Go to the next dimension, dude. <laughs> Press the button. Where dude, the man, button? transcend us. Yeah, dude. Beam us up now. Just say, just click stop <laughs> broadcast. Yeah, yeah, like transcend. Yep, bro. that's it. Let's go. Peace, bro. Peace, bye, bye. Man. Good talking to you. Awesome, man. Good talking to you, brother. Yeah. Peace. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Ah. Uh, Bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Press the button. <laughs>